process age two or three I was one of the kids that was always well most kids do draw at that stage you know two three four five six but I think the difference in, in my case was my mum was always encouraging us and saying oh that's brilliant you're going to be an artist and stuff and I was the one who took her literally <laughs> you know because I have a brother who, who could draw really well and he just sort of lost interest so I just uh, kept at it and I remember any, every time my dad got a new shirt my mum would give me the piece of card that came in it and I'd oh brilliant something to draw on so I was just drawing all the time back there there was a big big movement between that sort of passion as a kid um, getting a bit older wanting to be an artist and I I think I I read lots of books about the Renaissance and uh, and and the old masters and I was fascinated by them and I wanted to be that kind of painter and I had no notion about being a, a book illustrator I didn't know how the pictures got into the books I had no idea I didn't even think about the fact that there was a designer or, or, or a, an illustrator who did it um, so I just knew I wanted to be a painter but then as I was going through school and I was it was becoming a bit more clear that uh, that the art scene as it was at, it wasn't sort of really uh, the kind of scene that I was thinking of um, and then when I went to art college itself um, I was passionate about drawing and drawing from life and and drawing naturalistically and that was really the out kind of thing no one was doing that uh, when I went to college first except they were in the illustration department and I found my way there and then I started only at a quite a late stage discovering what book illustration was all about I was doing illustration and I found my way to Brighton College over in England and one of the tutors there was was Ray Briggs uh, who did the snowman and did um, fungus the bogeyman and, and we all found him very inspiring and he was doing so well. And, and he took a group of us into a room one time and he showed us this rough cut of the movie, The, the Snowman. It was before the music had been added. And, uh, and we just thought, oh, this is the most beautiful thing. And I, I suppose a lot of us tried to emulate what, what Briggs was doing there. I was living in England at that stage, but my Irishness was very important to me. And I was reading a lot of Irish stories and the the culture of storytelling and myth and uh, legend was really important to me. The first book project I was given was uh, a book of um, they were actually English fairy tales, uh, but for me they they struck so many echoes with my own life and history. And when it came to illustrating them, I I put in uncles of mine and grandparents of mine and the settings are very much North Antrim if you look at the book it's called a bag of moonshine if you look at the pictures in there um, there's a real it, it, it's drawn from my own experience and that was very personal to me and it was important to me that these stories to make them ring true that I made them authentic and I made them true to me and then luckily I find that that struck a, a chord with other people I started off working with watercolour, very traditional uh, medium. Uh, do I would do an ink drawing and then I would colour it with watercolour. Uh, and I was living in England and there were lots of people doing that very British technique of, of watercolour and ink. Uh, but I think I always wanted to push it. I was more influenced by the American illustrators that I, I knew. And again, looking back to, to the Renaissance masters that I loved, and I wanted to create more relief and more sense of depth rather than just a few flat washes. So I was always pushing it, and I was trying to go darker with my dark areas and lighter with my light areas. And then I, so I added uh, gouache, so it, it, it's body color, which gives you highlights and darker darks. And I would add ink to get more intense color. So I was always pushing my technique I did uh, a few books using uh, oil paints because with oil paints you get a great dynamic range from the brightest to the darkest and uh, and I, I love the quality of oil paints as well so I'm always looking for uh, different 
different media, a, a medium that, that suits a particular book. And, uh, and in re more recent years, I've, I would use uh, Photoshop to enhance the pictures that I do. I do the pictures as, as, as well as I possibly can. And then I take them into the computer and I enhance it by sort of turning up the contrast often or touching up a little bit. But I always want it to look like an organic piece of work at the end. I did a book called uh, Once Upon a Place, with which my pal Owen Colfer edited. And Owen wanted it to have a, a sort of homogenous approach. So he, he asked me to illustrate all these various stories. And it had to be done quickly, so I, I I got out my charcoals and I, I knew it was the quickest way to draw and I found I fell in love with with charcoal uh, on cardboard drawings all over again which I hadn't done for years now you talk about my practice I come in and I start the morning I, I do a, a few scribbles on, on charcoal and I, I I find it's a great way to to invent compositions and things because you can rub stuff out completely and I what I used to do was I, I would scribble away and do little thumbnails in pencil but I find this is much more effective for me to, to work big uh, and it's much more freeing and expressive so um, that that's one element of, of how I come up with my roughs and my compositions um, another thing would be like there are lots of uh, my my portraits around here I love working from life I think that working from life is really important if you, if you want to be a naturalistic artist uh, because it informs all your decisions about about how light falls in a face, how how your nose is formed, and where an ear sits in the body. And I, there are a lot of illustrators who who work from photos. And I think if you if you do that without the backup of understanding anatomy and having lots of life drawing, uh, it it never has a sort of a real depth there you know it, it never looks quite convincing for me to sit down and not to have to worry about uh, a book or um, a deadline or whatever just think I have to just draw what's in front of me for a while and I find it, it really is the most therapeutic thing I can do some people do yoga I do life drawing <laughs> when I get sent a story and I decide I'm going to illustrate this story then I start the research process. That process always helps me get into the whole idea of a book. And it's, it's, it's slow and it's long-winded and it's, it's also a way of delaying getting down to work. Um, but um, it helps me and it makes me feel more secure when I finally do start doing the, the drawings. book I did most research for would be the, the Boy Who Fell Off the Mayflower, because I was writing that as well. It's the story of the founding fathers of, of America coming from over from England, and so many Americans do know that story in detail. And for me, an Irishman, to be telling them, uh, hang on, you got this bit a little bit wrong, and this is what happened. And what I was really trying to do there was to make it a, a much more personal story, and to see the story from the point of view of a manservant as opposed to you know the leaders so I was attracted to the idea of uh, John Howland who was this young man who fell off the boat but saved himself and went on to he survived when many others died and he went on to become one of the most important of the um, the colonists and I thought if I was living back then 400 years ago uh, I would more likely be the manservant than than the chap who was giving the orders in the first place. So I, I could relate to him. Uh, so I had to do a lot of research about him. Usually I get sent a story by an author. Uh, well, my publishers would work with me and we would choose a, a suitable story. And, uh, and I love authors and I love when I get a good story sent to me and I have I, I value that text. And it's the thing that I, I keep going back to to create the pictures and to look for inspiration. And so for the first time, I was starting a project without that. And instead of having a text, I had to come up with the text myself. Uh, so it was it was radically different. It, it was very freeing for me because I think in some ways I may have had too much respect for, for authors because I find I, 
I could do it. It wasn't brilliant at first and I had to really slog at it. Uh, but um, it sort of, uh, it opened that door for me and now I feel that I, I, I did a good job on writing the first book and I'm looking forward to writing more things. And, and I love that idea that you can completely invent stuff. Whereas w as an illustrator, I can invent visuals, but they have to relate in some way to the text. But if I decide to go a completely different direction, it's, it's, it's as an author, you have immense power, <laughs> you know, or you can create a universe. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. And I'm, I wish I'd gotten into it a bit earlier, but I'm doing it now and I'm enjoying it very much. I'm really thrilled to have been named as the lion and, and to follow in the footsteps of people like Owen Colfer and Neve Sharkey and Siobhan Parkinson. But um, it, it, it's all about me communicating my enthusiasm for children's books to children and, and, and I love doing that. Another part of uh, being a laureate, we, we're calling the whole thing the big picture and I'm making uh, some video podcasts, uh, which it's my way of uh, sort of reaching out to people who are interested in children's books. I've been doing some demos on there and I've also been making uh, uh, video podcasts about authors I admire and illustrators as well. So uh, it's mostly focusing on, on Irish uh, talent. I think one of the strengths of my work was that I I tried to please myself with my pictures and with the stories that I, I work with. And I think people, that, that chimes with people. But at the same time, uh, it was a little bit artist in a garret working by himself rather than relating to other people. And since I've been the laureate, I've been going out and I've been meeting lots and lots of kids. And, and I think I, I started off thinking I'm going to be drawing for them and inspiring them. But the best fun has been whenever they've been drawing with me and and I started drawing and they can't wait to get stuck in and they're not shy about it. And I've really enjoyed that process.